Are you guys doing okay today? This is a very hot day. It's kind of nice to be inside, right? I came down from Oakland, where it's a little cooler. Um, but I'm excited to be here with you all. I'm actually here because we're downstairs setting up for an educator program. We have an educator program running all next week where teachers from around the country, some from Canada um, and other places outside the US are coming to actually learn about Raspberry Pi. So I'm really excited to see you all here because you're already sort of leading the way. Your teachers are the ones trying to learn. You guys are actually learning right now and so that's really great. Um, so like Priya said, I'm from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Most people are familiar with the Raspberry Pi. Have you guys done any Raspberry Pi yet today? A little bit? Okay, I think some more people are doing in the afternoon, right? So most people are familiar with this, right? This is the Raspberry Pi computer. Um, and what's really cool about the Raspberry Pi computer is that it's really small, it's a credit card sized computer, and it's really cheap. It's $35, right? And the reason it's those two things is because um, one of our founders, a guy named Eben Upton, who's somewhere on this list, a British guy, he said that he wanted to um, create a computer that young people could own themselves and learn how to code with. Um, when I was younger, some of you might actually remember this. Uh, I didn't put it on there. There's a device that many of you like. I, I guess ask one of the older folks in the room, what, what did you learn coding when you were growing up? I didn't bring my computer. Maybe like a Commodore 74 or something like that? an Apple IIe, right? So some, the devices that we were learning code on were much different um, back when you all were learning code originally, right? And now we have this Raspberry Pi computer that young people can access that's really affordable, okay? So our mission as a foundation, like I'm saying, is to put the power of digital making in the hands of people all over the world. There's a couple of ways we accomplish that. So one is through the Raspberry Pi. It's a low cost, high performance computer. Another is through outreach programs that make computing more relevant. So what's cool is there's actually um, a couple Raspberry Pis on the International Space Station right now um, that, are, that are going around Earth and they're running experiments. And those experiments were written by uh, middle school age youth. So a lot of young people your age. So it's a really cool outreach program called Astro Pi. And we also run free educator programs like Pi Academy. I already bopped around on a few of these slides, so you've seen these folks already. There's me up there, um, along with my team. We have a really small team here in the US. Like I said, the foundation is mainly based in the United Kingdom. There's a team of over 100 in the United Kingdom, in England and Ireland. That's where the Raspberry Pi was started. And so they're all doing work for the foundation over there. Um, if you want to learn more about our foundation, this is a great link. Um, I'm going to be sharing some of the resources from our foundation here and later in my slides, um, but this is where all of our resources are held. Um, like I said, we're really excited to be here at Computer History Museum. This is a photo from our very first Pi Academy event that we held here in 2016. These are all educators, all teachers, like your teachers who came to learn about Raspberry Pi. Um, and we're gonna be running this program over the next uh, week here at the Computer History Museum. And here's our Raspberry Pi. So just to, to make sure that you all understand, um, what do you see here on the Raspberry Pi? Yep, HDMI, right? There's a monitor that connects there. You've got the USB keyboard and mouse, right? You've got an SD card, that's where all your memory is. And then lastly, your power. That's all you need to hook up a Raspberry Pi. And those of you that have done it already, you've seen that. And those of you that are gonna do this afternoon. So this is the Raspberry Pi, but what's, the beauty of the Raspberry Pi that makes it different from other computers is that it allows you to plug things into it, like buttons and buzzers and lights. Is that kind of the stuff that you all were doing earlier with lights and buttons, right? And so this is a great gift. I, this is a guy named Nick. He's a librarian. And he came to one of our teacher programs, and he was so excited because he was lighting up an LED light. He was writing code on his Raspberry Pi and lighting up an LED light. And he just thought that was the coolest thing, right? You wrote code that made something happen in the real world. And so that's the, that is really the beauty of the Raspberry Pi is that it lets you bring your coding to life. And the way you do that is through these pins on the side. Did you all see these pins up here? Does anyone know what those pins are called? GPIO pins, right? General purpose input output. So you can have an input, um, like a button, if you use a button, or an output. And that's where you can connect things like a light. This is one of my favorite activities. I think you all might be doing this later today, where you just hook up a simple circuit. You just hook up an LED light, write a bit of Python code, and you can make that light blink. You can also do it on a breadboard. How many of you have 
done breadboarding before. A few of you? Yeah? So breadboarding lets you, you don't have to solder, you don't have to accidentally burn your hands with solder, you can just temporarily put things in out. So it lets you make this circuit. You connect it up to a 3V3 power, bring it through the LED, a resistor, back to the ground, and you've got a simple circuit, right? And that's that hands-on, real-world coding. Um, we as a foundation, like I said, our mission is to get young people and people of all ages the opportunity to learn how to code. So we have projects in Scratch, HTML, Python, Raspberry Pi, obviously, Sense Hat, and Sonic Pi. Um, we, have these, we share all these projects online. They're free and open source. They're available for you at any time. And this is sort of a fun example of the, the LED light project. The next level is you can create like a little robot antenna. So you can sort of build out and build out and build out from here. Were any of you at Maker Faire this year? It was a couple weeks ago? You probably saw a ton of Raspberry Pi projects there. A lot of the robots, the drones that they build are powered by a Raspberry Pi as the brain on that computer. Um, I also want to share a few of the resources. We also support a, a global network of coding clubs. So if you're not doing computer science in your school or you just want to do more coding, there's a great network called Code Club. There's, pro there's a, probably a code club right near you here in California. And this is a great way to meet other people that love coding and code with them. And this is the community that we help support as a foundation. Um, we also have something called Coder Dojo. Is anyone familiar with Coder Dojo? Um, you, maybe you've heard of one. There's, there's one down here in the peninsula. This is also an after-school coding network um, that is free and open for anyone to go to. So you might want to find a Coder Dojo near you. Um, this one was started in Ireland, actually, and we're, they're now in our foundation. Um, if you're a parent in the room and you want to beef up your skills, we also have free online courses. We write these for teachers, but you guys are all teachers to young, young people. So if you want to check out some online courses, one of my favorite ones um, is Programming 101. If you want to get started with Python and you're, you haven't, don't have enough experience with Python, that's a great course. Um, and these are all written by folks in our foundation. Martin is actually downstairs right now setting up. He's one of our colleagues from uh, Cambridge, England. Um, so I shared some of our adult resources. We have our in-person workshops, our online training, and then for all you young people, we have our projects page and then our networks like Code Club and Coder Dojo. So I kind of just want to leave it open for questions at this point. Um, I shared a little bit about the foundation. Hopefully that gave you guys some information. Um, and I would love to hear from you. You can ask me questions about myself, about Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, go ahead. I'll say your question back so everyone can hear you. That's a really good question. I didn't. I personally didn't name it Raspberry Pi. I'm. I'm. I'm not the boss man of Raspberry Pi. Um, that's a guy named Eben, who's a brilliant guy. His photo is actually downstairs um, in one of the exhibits. So Eben, he um, named it Raspberry Pi for two reasons. One is computers have a, a history of being named after fruit. Can you guys remember? Do you know one computer that's named after a fruit? Apple, right? So he was playing a little joke and saying, let's call it Raspberry, right? So he, that's the sort of thing. There's also a computer, an old computer called a Pear. Has anyone heard of that? There was a Pear, it's a really old computer. And then Pi is not P-I-E. When I tell people I work at Raspberry Pi, sometimes they wonder, they didn't know I, I liked baking so much. Um, but that's actually not it, right? P-I, does anyone know what P-I stands for? Like the number, right? 3.14. So, that's the reference there, and then also Pi for Python, because when they first were creating it, they were thinking it would be run off Python. That's a really good question. Thanks for asking. Other questions? Yeah. How did I get involved? That's a good question. Um, so my background's actually in biology. Um, how many of you are sixth graders? Seventh graders? Eighth graders? So I taught sixth, seventh, and eighth grade science in Brooklyn, New York. So my background is actually as a teacher, not in coding, not in computer science, and just straight up science. Um, but the beauty of the foundation and the beauty of our work is we don't care if you have a background in computer science. We want to give you the opportunity to learn and explore. So most of our team doesn't have a background in computer science. It's something that we've come to new. And now I'm teaching classes about computer science. So I think that's a really important point. Um, but I was a teacher. I worked at the California Academy of Sciences for a number of years. Some of you maybe have been there. Um, and I've worked for a few other nonprofits. Um, but I would say this, and I'm not sure if this is what you kind of were getting at with your question, is 
for you young people, um, you, you really have the world, like this is the quote that I put up before I got started, just explore what interests you, right? Um, you should be going after what interests you and always keeping open to that. Um, so my background wasn't in computer science, but I've, it interested me, so I went and, and moved into that. Other questions? Anything you want to know? No, go for it, then I'll come back to you here, yeah. Go for it. How many Raspberry Pis are there in the world? That's a great question. There are 26 million Raspberry Pis in the world. Um, when Eben started the Raspberry Pi back in, I, I think it was about five or six years ago, he thought they might sell like a thousand or more to hobbyists, people that were just thought it was a cool thing. And now it's the best selling computer in all of England, in all of the United Kingdom. They were just, I think, passed to 25 or 26 million. Um, Sony uses them in their factories to make their processing their, their, um, more efficient, their, what they do. Um, people at Home Depot use them um, so that when you go up and you want to find something in the store, like you guys ever gone and printed out movie tickets? You know, you have to go up to the screen and print out a movie ticket? That's probably run by a Raspberry Pi. It's just the brain behind that screen, right? It's a simple computer. They're used by the military, they're used up in the space station, they're used by governments, they're used in all different types of ways. Yeah. Oh, and, that, and I'll come back to you, yeah. I'll go with her and I'll come back to you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the question is like, what are the non-educational uses for Raspberry Pi? There's a lot of adults in this room. Do any of you use Raspberry Pi currently? Do any of your work use it? Because I know there's a couple companies that use it for, you can use it for a, monitor, a home monitoring system. So you set up a camera, a motion sensor. If someone walks in front of your door, that's like the doorbell um, alarm that you can buy now from Amazon, right? You can set it up in a lot of different practical ways. I know people that have set it up to, to water their gardens. They have a temperature sensor, and when the temperature gets too high, it'll send a signal, and that'll send out water from their pump. Right? So there's lots of practical uses. One of my favorite things is just go to YouTube and type in Raspberry Pi. You're going to get so many of videos of people building all kinds of things with Raspberry Pi. You had a question here, yep. What are the economics? You mean in terms of the price point? What makes it so popular? Well, the two reasons I think it makes it so popular. One is that it's really cheap. We as a foundation make sure that the price point is l as low as possible so that you all can um, have access to these. All the, f the funds that go from people buying Raspberry Pis go directly back to us to as a foundation for us to do free programming. And then lastly, I think the other reason is it's a Linux-based system. Do any of you know about that? So that what that means is when you buy your Apple, you pretty much have to do what the Apple tells you to do, right? You have to use the Mac OS, you have to do what they tell you to do. The Pi, you can hack it, you can build it up, build it down, you can do whatever you want with it. It's an open system, an open source software system that you can do whatever you want. So that makes it really interesting to people who want to be creative. Yep. The processor, that's a good question. It's a Broadcom chip. Um, let me see if I can go back to this slide. Um, the processor is, a, yeah, it's a Broadcom chip. I'm not sure. They're getting better and better. The first Raspberry Pi was $35, and it, it had about a quarter of the memory that the current one does, and the current one's still $35. So we just make, make it as, as good, better and better as we can while never changing the price. Yep. That's a good question. How many have they made per day? I, that's a really good question. There's a cool video that our social team just did because Raspberry Pis are made, some of them are made in, in England, in Sheffield, England. They're produced there. You can type in how is Masbury, Raspberry Pi made and you can watch a really cool video of the factory where they make Raspberry Pis. Yep. Uh, say it one more time. Oh, before going bad. Um, I mean, some people have the original Raspberry Pis from six years ago that they still use. The, the, the cool thing is, though, is like, if you have a Raspberry Pi and it breaks, that's no big deal. 
it was $35. You can just get another one, right? It's, uh, we've made the computer as affordable as possible so that we want you to tinker with it. We want you to accidentally break it. That's fine, right? When, if, when I was younger, if I had broken my home computer, I would have been in big trouble because that was like really expensive, right? But nowadays, computing is really cheap. Here, and then I'll go to this guy here, yeah. No, I don't think they're handmade. They're put through a system. Yeah, they have all the parts, and then they put them together and solder them together, yeah. That's a really good question. He asked, does the Raspberry Pi overheat? Um, yeah, like all computers, if you put it out in the sun, like you ever put your phone out in the sun, and it's like, take me out of the sun, or else I'm going to... I'm going to turn off, right? There's automatic sensors that will kick on. So the Pi um, will overheat. But there's um, a copper. It's actually not shown on this diagram. But if you see Raspberry Pi, there's actually a plate of copper on there. And that's so that it absorbs the heat so that it doesn't overheat. It has a little bit of a system there. Maybe one or two more questions. Yep. What's the coolest Raspberry Pi project I've made? So I made a, um, a, a Babbage bot. So we, our mascot, his name is Babbage. Um, that's Babbage right there. Do you guys see that bear? His name is Babbage. And if you know, there's a famous computer scientist named Babbage. So we have Babbage the bear. And for my program, the hashtag is Pi Academy. But people always misspell it, and they write Pi Academy. So I made a Twitter bot who's called Charlie Babbage the Twitter bot. And when people use the wrong hashtag, he politely tweets at them and says, hey, I see that you're trying to use this hashtag, but you wrote it wrong. Could you please try again with the right hashtag? So that's, that's, that's something fun that I, I wrote. Cool. Yeah, one more question. I don't know how much it costs, but like I said, we try and keep it the price point as low as possible, and we, we haven't changed that price point so that everyone can afford one. Yeah, that's a good question. I can't, I don't know that offhand what the, the cost of the parts are, but a lot of you probably have built your own computers, so you kind of know the price point there. I'm going to wrap up, and then I'll come answer your question. I'll be hanging out for the next five minutes, and I'll come answer it. Um, but hopefully that was informative to you all. The main point is we're a foundation. Everything we make on our website is all of our resources are free, free to use. Really encourage you to check those out. If you want to buy a Raspberry Pi, I think they're selling them downstairs at the store. And then you can also just buy them on like Amazon. So thanks so much. Hopefully that was informative and hope you have a good rest of your day.